Algebra 2, 1.10b, we're going to write a column proof, and I've got four theorems for you. Number properties that can be proved by using axioms and definitions are called theorems. And to prove a theorem, we write a sequence of statements. Each statement must be supported by an axiom, a definition, or a previously proved statement. And proofs are usually written in columns to show how each statement is supported. So here's our first theorem. We have an extended distributive property. It says for any real numbers a, b, c, and d that we can distribute the a to everything inside the parentheses. See? We could even have plus e plus f plus g inside of here. It's going to equal a times b plus a times c plus a times d. We distribute the a to each one inside the parentheses. So here's a proof table, or a column proof, and it's got statements on one side, reasons on the other, and it's separated by a line, and it's numbered, and we support each one of these statements with a reason. So there's going to be an axiom or a property on this side, or a definition, or a previously proved statement on this side. We make a statement, and we give our reason. We make another statement based on that, and give another reason. We make another statement based on that, see? So... For any real numbers, a, b, c, and d is going to equal a distributed to each one inside of the parentheses as a, b, plus a, c, plus a, d, that theorem we just talked about, that extended distributive property theorem, we can make this statement that this a times b plus c plus d, this statement here, is equal to adding b and c and distributing the a into the brackets. See that? And our reason for this is the associative property of addition says that we can regroup this. This then equals this. We can take the brackets away because we distribute the a to the d. That's the distributive property. And this is equal to this because we distribute the a to the b and the a to the c. So we end up with this a times b plus c plus d is equal to a times b plus a times c plus a times d, which is what it says up here. This is what we were trying to prove. And that's because of the transitive property. It says, it says if a is equal to b and b is equal to c, then a is equal to c. So what it's saying is because this number one up here is equal to this, and this is equal to this, and this is equal to this. Well, if they're all equal to each other, then this one must also be equal to that one. See? We made a sequence of statements with reasons that took us from number one to number four, and we supported each statement with a reason. See? All right. Which axiom or property justifies the statement? So we have 4x times 3y is equal to 3y times 4x. Well, that's the commutative property of multiplication, isn't it? What if we have five halves and we've got x plus a negative y inside of brackets and it equals five halves x plus five halves times negative y? Well, that's the distributive property, isn't it? It distributed the five halves to each one of the factors, the terms inside of here, right? How about if we have if x equals y and y equals 5, then x equals 5? Well, that's the transitive property. If y equals x and a 5, well, then x equals 5. And ax equals ax, well, that's the reflexive property of equality, isn't it? It's like a mirror. It's the same thing on each side of the equal sign. Ax equals ax plus zero. That's the additive identity that we can add a zero and it's going to keep its identity, right? Here we've got ax plus zero equals ax plus a plus a negative a. Well, that's the additive, additive inverse property, isn't it? That makes the zero pair a plus a and a minus a. And now we have ax plus a plus negative a, this one, is equal to ax plus a times one plus negative a. Well, that's the multiplicative identity property. We multiply a times 1, and it's going to keep its identity a, just like that, right? Okay, I've got a few theorems for you. This is the multiplicative property of 0. It says for any real number a, a times 0 equals 0. 
So 3 times 0 is 0, negative 5 times 0 is 0. The additive inverse of product says for any real numbers a and b, if we have a and b inside parentheses and we have a negative on the outside, that's going to equal negative a times b, which is going to equal a times negative b. It says the additive inverse of the product of two numbers is equal, it's equivalent to the product of either number and the additive inverse of the other. So to make this less confusing, let's punch in some real numbers. So instead of negative and then the a and b in parentheses, let's put a negative and a 2 and 3 inside the parentheses. See? That's going to equal a negative 2 times 3, isn't it? And it's also going to be the same thing as 2 times negative 3. It's still a negative 6, isn't it? See? That's the additive inverses of products. Here's our last theorem, the products of additive inverses. This was additive inverses of products. This one's products of additive inverses. The words got flipped around, didn't they? And it says for any real numbers a and b, if we have a negative a times a negative b, it's going to equal a positive a times b. The product of the inverses of two numbers is the same as the product of those numbers. So plug in some real numbers to explain it. We have a negative 2 and a negative 4 multiplied together. It's the same thing as 2 times 4, isn't it? Because two negatives make positive, right? Now, one thing I wanted to point out to you that might be confusing to some people is each textbook numbers their theorems, axioms, and postulates differently. I know that's crazy. They usually agree on the name of the theorems and axioms, but a lot of times you're going to find that it's not the same from one textbook to another. So you may think that this is theorem 1-14, and then in some other textbook, it won't even have a number. Sometimes the textbooks don't even number them at all. All right? In this textbook, the inverse properties right here, they don't even give a number. See? And that's this textbook. See? It didn't even give a number for the inverse properties. It just says inverse properties. So it agreed on the name, right? Now here's a blast from the past. This is my textbook from the early 70s when I took algebra in high school. And it's got multiplicative inverses, but they're not numbered. It just has little red boxes showing what the multiplicative inverses are. Look at this old book. That's pretty old. Not as pretty as the ones you guys have now, huh? But then look at this one. They're numbered. The multiplicative property of 0 is theorem 1-14. And the additive inverses of products is 1-15. So it depends on who's making the textbook. Sometimes, sometimes they number them, and sometimes they don't. But they do agree on the names, don't they? So don't worry if you see different numbers for different theorems and axioms. Just worry about what they're called or what they do, all right? Don't let it bother you. Our next video, we're going to talk about reasoning strategies for word problems. And after that, we're going to be done with Chapter 1, and we're going to start on Chapter 2, all right? I hope this was helpful. I hope you're doing all right, and I'll see you next video. Bye.